Well, good morning and welcome to the Respond Customer Service webinar series, which takes place the second Tuesday of the month. We're glad you've joined us. And I'm going to hand things over to Jeremy here in just a second. But before I do, I want to encourage everyone on the uh, live presentation today to enter questions at any point throughout Jeremy's presentation. He'll get to those questions at the end. And if that dashboard um, on the right-hand side of your screen does collapse, you can just click that red arrow to expand it and enter any questions into that question area. So with that, I'm going to introduce Jeremy. He's an Associate Technical Analyst on our Respond Technical Support Team, and he will be speaking about subcharges. What are subcharges and categories? And with that, I'm going to hand things over to Jeremy. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, Sherry, and thank you, and thank you to everyone here for joining us today. So yes, the, the topic for today is subcharges and categories. What are they? How do they work? How can they make my life a little bit easier? Which is obviously the goal of our platform that we've got here for you. So let's start off first with categories. A category is a way for you to organize codes on your system. Now there are all sorts of different codes. If you've been on the system for any time at all, you know there's just scads and scads of codes. But I'll look at payer codes here for an example. This list is an extensive list. You could be clicking through this list. If you're looking for a payer code and you may not know the ID and you may not know the exact description, but you're trying to find one thing that matches, you could be scrolling through this list for a lot of time. And uh, you know, time is money. And so we want to make sure that we make this process as easy as possible for you to locate the codes that you need in as quick and efficient way as we can. So that's where category codes come in. It's a way for you to organize codes into different uh, like sections so you can search for them and find them quickly. So that's just an example there with the payer codes, but I'm going to head up to the codes menu here and select category. And we'll go ahead and see what it takes to build out a category code. So the first thing that you're going to have to decide is which code do you want to build categories for. So you select your drop down menu and you'll see here there's all sorts of different codes that you can uh, build categories for. And uh, you may want to organize your city codes into areas. You may want to organize your ICD-10 codes into different, uh, you know, uh, body systems or different uh, issues that can come up on a regular basis. For today's purposes, for demonstration, I'm going to select payer codes. And once I select payer codes as the type of code that I want to build categories for, you'll see that there's already three categories here that I've built. So I've started to segment the payer codes into different sections. I've got a Blue Cross Blue Shield, a General Insurance, and a Medicaid. So if you want to add a new category to your uh, payer codes, you'll select New. And then you'll just type in here what you want that one to be. Well, let's, select, uh, let's make a Medicare category. Then you can accept that to the grid, and you'll see it populate up here. And all you do then is hit OK. So now we've given our payer codes four different categories that they can be assigned to in order to help us search for them. So I'll hit OK there. And so once we've got this uh, selected on the category side, we need to assign that category to an actual payer. So I'm going to bring up a payer that I'm working with here today. I've got our, our patient over here on the right side of my screen, Mr. Donald Duck. I uh, had a tough day the other day, so we're going to get him some, uh, get him a claim out here. The pay, uh, the payer that I built for that uh, demonstration purpose is a Blue Cross Blue Shield payer of Florida. So I just made this ID up that way. So Blue Cross Blue Shield of Florida. Now you'll see there isn't anything selected here in this data entry category. That's where you're going to be selecting the category that you want to try to drill down on when you're trying to find this payer. So I'll select the search icon here. And it brings up all my different categories that are available for a payer code, since that's what we're working with is a payer code. Now, this one is a Blue Cross Blue Shield, so I'm going to move that entry over here to the included side, hit OK, and then save that change to that payer. So that's all it takes to assign a category to a payer code. Simply select it from the data entry category there and hit Save. So once I've got the payer code with a category assigned, I can go over here to my patient. Here's Mr. Duck, and I've got the payers tab up here already. You see I've got a private pay and a Medicare, but we're going to want to add a Blue Cross Blue Shield payer. So I'll hit New and select for my uh, the search for my payer IDs. 
And again, we've got this same window here full of things that we could scroll or we could select the, from the drop down here the data entry category. And here's that blue cross blue shield that we just built and that we just assigned to that blue cross blue shield of Florida. And there it is. So that's just two or three mouse clicks away from being able to be assigned to that payer, to that patient. So of course I'm missing all sorts of different things that I would have to build in here uh, to assign the payer to the patient, but that's how you find it using the category. And then once you continue to fill out your, uh, your payer information, you can then hit OK and it would save it to the grid here for that particular patient. So that's how you would utilize a category to drill down on your payer codes. Instead of going through a list of dozens and dozens of codes, that category is going to allow you to get right to your Blue Cross payers or your Medicare payers or however it is that you organize it in order to find them and assign them quickly to a patient. So that's how we work with categories. And remember, if I go back to the categories menu here, you can assign them to any number of different codes, just whatever it is that you want to organize to make it a little easier to find sections of codes or segments of your codes that uh, have commonalities. Again, the idea here is to let you find those, get them assigned to the call as quickly and efficiently as possible. So that's, a, in a nutshell, what categories are. The second portion of our conversation for today is subcharges. So what's a subcharge? A subcharge is a way for you to build additional pieces of charge information into a single charge with the goal of saving keystrokes in mind. So here's how they work. I'm going to start up here once again on codes and I'm going to bring up a charge code. And this is a charge code that I built for demonstration purposes today. So it's a BLS charge and I just put in my description here with subcharge. So how this works is if you've got a, a call you know, you're, you're more than likely going to be adding a base charge on, on most calls. And then what likely comes next? Usually a mileage, maybe a, a supplies charge, maybe an excess mileage, maybe another attendant. You could go through your charge screen here on the call and look up each individual charge and add each individual one. Or you can utilize subcharges. Here's how that works. So you decide what charge you want to start with. Typically, people start with a base charge and then add from there. Then you're going to navigate to the subcharges tab, and you're going to hit your search icon. This will bring up all the options of things that you can include as subcharges underneath this base charge. So most typical uh, extra charge is going to be mileage. And perhaps maybe an extra attendant was riding on that truck or, or typically rides on the truck and maybe they administered um, oxygen. Now I know this is a BLS call but let's work with me here today for example purposes. So all you do is select the things that you want to add as subcharges, move them over to the included side and hit OK. And they'll populate in this grid here underneath this BLS charge. So you'll save that charge code and then it'll be ready for use when you assign it to a call, which we can do right now. So we're on our call here. Here's Mr. Duck's call back from uh, January 5th. We'll, we're on our charges tab. We'll hit edit. And then we'll search for a charge ID here with the search icon. Same thing you do every day when you're assigning charges to your calls. Now forgive me, I'm working on a wireless connection today so it doesn't move as quickly as I'd like. So here's my BLS charge with the subcharges that I built. And I'll select OK puts on my base charge. Okay, your base charge is pretty well set. It's a base. So then you accept that to the grid. It populates in the grid and then it brings up this dialog box. This allows you to either accept or cancel each of these charges. So if I didn't have an extra attendant, I'm going to hit cancel. Forgive me there. I hit the I zigged when I should have zagged. So I'm going to put my subcharge on here and if I accept that it brings up all these once I hit OK it's gonna run me through each of these different charges so do I have an attendant on here I'm gonna accept that attendant then it's gonna prompt me for mileage I'll hit OK and I'll accept the mileage I'll put in let's say 10 miles uh, and we administered oxygen on this so we'll accept that as well 
So we've got all these on here. Now, just because the prompts put us through that, we're not married to these. We don't have to have these on there. So we can just reverse that one off if we don't want to include that. So what this does is it allows you to include just that base charge and maybe run that mileage. But let's say this is a treat no transport call. So we'll just reverse that one off too. What it does is it allows you to prompt uh, the system to ask for the those extra charges that are typically included on a call so you can get to them without having to go through the search menu every time. So just remember that you're not married to these, you don't have to include each one, it just is a way to prompt you quickly for those charges that typically follow a base charge in this case. So once I get all that put together, just hit OK and there my charges appear on the call and only were the ones that I wanted to, to maintain. So you can save that and then your call's all done. And there's all sorts of stuff that I didn't fill out on the call here. It's uh, waiting for me to finish. So that's the bulk of the, the conversation for today. First off with categories. Remember categories are ways for you to organize your codes, to group them in, in ways that make sense, that allow you to navigate quickly from one to the other. And then the other uh, piece of our conversation today was subcharges. You know, how, how do I save myself the time of going from one charge to the next and looking each one up? Well, that would be with subcharges. Once you put on a base charge to a call, then those subcharges will populate. You can accept or decline those charges as they come up and then have your call coded and have all the proper charges added to that call in a quick and efficient manner. So that's what we have for today on those uh, pieces of content that we wanted to share with you. Now, did we have any questions pop up? Okay, so Brenda's got a question here. Would it be correct to think of categories as folders like you would use in Word, for example? I think that would be an excellent uh, analogy to make there, Brenda. Yeah, you can group them in folders. So if you've got folders on your PC where you've got, uh, maybe even on your Outlook, you're organizing emails by uh, emails from one person or another, and you select a, a folder for, for, for Jim, for Bill, for Tom, for, for Jane, whomever that might be, the categories can be used the same way. You can put them in, in you know, for, figuratively speaking, folders to be able to organize them and get to them quickly. And then Michelle wants to know, does adding a subcharge affect the contractual write-offs that are set up, or does that still work the same? Now this one, Michelle, I'll admit to you, I may have to research a little bit more, but I don't believe it's going to affect the contractual write-offs as you add a subcharge but I'm going to have uh, our wonderful host, Cherry, print off the report of questions for me today, and I'm going to research that a little bit, Michelle, and I will follow up with you, uh, make sure our, our, uh, our CAC certified folks in the office here get me the perfect answer for you, and we'll get you taken care of. So that's what I have for you today. As always, it was a pleasure to spend part of the morning with you folks. If you have any further questions, don't ever hesitate to call us on the support line at 800-987-0911, option 5 and we'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you all for joining us today on the Respond webinar, and I'll pass it back to Sherry. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining us. We hope uh, wherever you're at, your weather's better than ours. We have freezing rain here today, so be safe out there and have a great day. Bye now.